Good morning. Welcome to another Polymer Jam. I'm in Morab Gardens and um, not connected to the network, but I already have what I needed, hopefully loaded, here to show you. And um, I'll be making it into an element, but first of all, I'm just exploring what um, the Reed Sullivan error correction codes can do, uh, error correction algorithm can do. Now, lots of people talk about it on the internet, and it's really confusing. So, uh, have you ever made a spreadsheet? Basically, what this thing does is like makes a spreadsheet of your data and adds checks and adds totals to each side and the bottom in such a way that you can then get that data back. It's actually by timesing it all together. Uh, so imagine if you had a checksum at the end of your column, which was everything times together, and then one of your bits of data got, got lost, then you could divide the checksum by everything else in the column, and then you could work out what was missing. So it's, it's like magic. But anyway, so um, you know, I'm making a new read element here, and then I'm giving it this um, bit of code to decode, one, two, three, and I'm giving it two extra bits to store it in, which is not a lot, but that will become clear why. Um, then I'm spitting out the code and um, spitting out, you know, what's what, what, how it's encoded it. <coughs> then I'm going to rub out the um, first bit with letter 65, which is actually a capital A. Or I could do 66, which would be capital B. Anyway, it doesn't matter exactly what, what I put in. Basically, I'm corrupting the table and seeing whether it can correct it. Now, uh, and then I'm logging that out. Uh, this map function is just um, turning it back into a string of characters so that you, you can see it. Let me show you. So, here's the information before it was um, decoded. Here's my, my checksum with using two characters. Now, the way that it does it is quite strange. Um, and it's got a lot of lovely maths in there, which I don't fully understand. And I might at one stage, but at the moment, just think of it as a checksum, like timesing your your matrix together. And um, there you go. So, so I've corrupted the first character. So here's my B, and then this is the representation of those other characters as characters. Doesn't actually make sense. And it decodes as one, two, three, which is what we had in the first place. So that's good. I can corrupt one character. Now let's see if I can corrupt two. So, and maybe I'll move. I'll, I'll, I'll add another check there. If you're wondering why I'm not using um, those semicolons at the end of the at the end of the line, it's because I heard somebody um, say, you know, the inventor of um, um, JSON data. I can't remember his name. Crawford, Crawford, something like that. Anyway. He was saying that it's um, using them is uh, a good way to start um, looking professional. So, as I don't really want to look professional or intimidating, I want people to feel like, oh, this is a quite nice, simple language. I'm going to leave them off. Um, I don't mind looking like an amateur <laughs> at all. Okay, so let's. So there's the there's the corrupted one. Uh, let's see if we can corrupt two. See the and I'm gonna make this one an A. Oh no, no I should do. Uh, that is funny, isn't anyway. it? So now let's see how it does. Oh, it still manages to decode it. Hang on a sec. I'm just saying the same character twice. No wonder it can decode. 
Okay. See, if I had a semicolon there, it would have run. <laughs> We're pressing enter in the console. This is rather annoying. Anyway, so, so let's make. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so there's our uncorrupted code, and then if we corrupt it, and now it can't decode it because there's too many errors, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Now, if I was to increase this to give it three characters, it could probably handle that error. Let's try. Nope, still too many errors. I think it's um, you have to give it twice as many um, characters that you want errors to be corrected. So I've got two errors here. Now I can correct it. Uh, but I don't want that because for my treasure hunt, uh, which I'm working on with Pixie, my daughter, um, I'm thinking that I'd like people to be able to to collect nine special items and then be able to put those special items together and it add up to something that decodes something special. But I think there will be actually ten different codes in total and I want them to be able to connect any nine of those ten. So this is why I'm, I'm, I'm playing with this code. So let's say there's 10 things to collect and I want them to only, they want to be able to collect at least nine of them. Uh, now the order of them is very important because if they're in the wrong order, obviously it's not going to, it's going to think that's an error, get rid of it. But the beauty of JavaScript and computers is they can do this completely very fast. So I can try all nine things in every possible order of, of the nine things and it's it's only 81 different I don't know how many different variations it is but it, it's not going to be a huge amount even if it's hundreds or thousands it's no, still worth computing to get this um, decryption key which will then give you uh, your prize at the end of the of the um, game so Basically, with two things missing, I shouldn't be able to work out um, what the what all the characters were. But with one, I I will be able to. That's that's the aim. So, so even with a longer code, it, it should work the same. Let's just test that out. So. There we go, we've got the 66 there, which is obviously incorrect because it's not even a number. <laughs> um, and then we've got B because it's decoding the 66, it's coercing it into a number and then coercing it back into a B. Um, it's taking over my zero and it's decodable, excellent. But if they've only collected um, this should work with any of those. Let, let's try a different one. Let's try seven. Let's say they collect the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, miss out the seven on the treasure hunt, and get eight and nine. Still decodes. Now, now obviously, this it, is not because it's going to be a simple one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine code. As a, as a coder, because they could brute force that. Well, somebody could brute force that, uh, a determined individual. So I'm going to spread this across lots of different components, which is why I need Polymer to be able to help me. Because with Polymer, I can make a HTML element and an input text box. Um, I can spread out my data again. It sort of gives me access to the computer. 
this is great the um console love it except you know you press down you press up and then you've lost what you press down for. It's like, oh nightmare anyway um so that should actually be 66 not that it really matters I could just say it equals nothing or try and delete it, I suppose. But anyway, shall C, shall B. See, and that's the other thing with the console. You can't really press enter without going shift enter. I quite like shift enter to be the thing that ran it. Anyway, right, so let's pick another random one, let's say three. And so they're both B's now and cannot decode and but with four can decode and with three I actually get a nice error message with three so maybe I'll just stick with that. Um yeah. Uh, and then so the idea being that you have one two four five six seven eight nine and that's like they can be tested in all the orders um, and then it's you can find when you've got the correct order because um, this will say ah you've you it will try and de decode it anyway well actually it might wait until you've got um, nine different ones before it tries to start decoding So yeah, that, um, I'll, I'll put this into Polymer and then um, I have a nice interface to show you around the Reed Salomon um, error correction codes and how it can be used to, I mean you can use it in lots of ways, you could have like, say you want three people to be, have to sign on an account um, for Bitcoins or something. Um, this is the sort of thing you'd use to, to um, make sure at least three people sign out of nine or something say if you've got um ten people and you need you need the, the code the full code if three of them give you keys then you give each of them part of this key and um then the computer can put them all back together and go ah i can find it or ah, i can't and still have it really hard to brute force by spreading this across lots of elements. Anyway, I'll be doing that um, probably this afternoon after work and I'll record it and put it up at some point. Thanks, man. Oh, well, thanks, people. Thanks, man. That's really bad because, you know, I really love my daughter and um, I'd love her to get into this sort of thing. And this video, might she might even watch it. So thanks, people. Um, and uh, yeah i really want everybody to try and drop their prejudices around um anything that would be really cool especially stereotyping because you know it's just annoying that when people i find it annoying when people put people into a different um box to what they actually might want to be interested in oh you'll be bad at this just that general kind of impression for a teacher if a teacher is with a student for long enough then they will actually become bad at it so um, just be open to the possibility that everybody could be just as good as the, as as they possibly could can be all right i just noticed i'm looking down on you sorry guys it's because i'm in the park this is um more gardens see and uh, the funny noises of people kicking cans is that's why all right bye